Good day, champions. Here, we will be learning how to convert a value between two scales. So for example here, we have two scales that are not the same size, that start and end at different values, 0 to 20, 0 to 10. What we're going to do is break down the process of finding out what the equivalent value will be on the second scale when a value is chosen on the first scale. So for example, if our chosen value here is 17, what is the equivalent on our second scale? Now, if you would like to jump straight into the final code, the link's in the description. It contains two functions that do the same thing, an easy to read detailed one and a lightweight one. And as a note, even though we're going to use c -sharp in this video, the process can be applied to other languages as well. Now, let's begin with our first scale. Here, for our demonstration purposes, we'll have our first scale start at minus five and end at plus five, as you can see here on this number line. Okay, now for our second example scale, let's use the values of plus 10 to plus 18. Perfect, now our scales are set in place. Let's choose a value on our first scale that we wish to convert to our second scale. So let's choose a random number, say, plus three. Okay, so now we have all the information we need for the conversion. Let's walk through the process before we jump into the code. Okay, there are four important steps to this conversion. First, we need to offset our chosen value and move it so that our first scale starts at the origin. This will give us a fixed point of reference during the conversion at which both our scales will start. Now, just to show you why this is helpful, I've created this image here. Here's an image that shows what's happening if we don't shift to the origin. Now you can see when they're both shifted here on the first one, it doesn't matter what you do to these scales, they will always match up one for one. So the yellow arrows here represent before and after you squashing and stretching these scales. Now they're still, when shifted to the origin, they're still nicely gonna keep a ratio together. However, here below, you can see that how switching between the scales can quickly become unmanageable if you don't shift to the origin. It's a lot nicer to keep them in sync, like this first one up here. So let's continue. Let's go back to our previous image. This offset step here is very important for our next step, which is normalizing the chosen value. Here we have our normalized value on our normalized scale. So this value of eight has now become 0 0.8. This value here is very useful because now step three, it can be multiplied by any length to transform it to a new size scale. So our second scale here is length eight. So we times this one here by eight to give us a new scale. Now we have our new value 6.4 in the correct position on this new scale. We will offset it back into position to start and end where our second scale does. And there you have it. We have successfully converted the value of three on this first scale to its equivalent 16.4 on this new scale. Now here I've included two different length scales and negative numbers and float numbers just to give you a good overview. So let's jump into Unity. Okay, in Unity, we have a fresh scene here it's set to 2D, but it's a fresh scene. Let's create a new script. So I'm going to call this one scale conversion. Now you wouldn't have a script just to do this conversion. You would probably have it as part of a utility script. But for this video, we only need this one file. Okay, let's create an empty object, call it scales. Just somewhere to hold this uh, script during runtime. Here we go. Now let's open that up. We won't need the start function, but we'll keep the update function for later on to test our new function. Now, so first we will create a function with all the values as individual floats, so it's easier to read and understand. And then after we'll create a second smaller one to streamline the process a bit. Okay, so we'll create a new function. Let's call it convert between scales. This is going to return a float and we'll give it the arguments of old value 
the value which we were trying to find the equivalent of on our second scale. Then we'll have the first scale, its minimum value, and the first scale maximum value. And then we'll have the same for our second scale, so that will be second scale min, oh, we've got capital. And lastly, second scale max, which will be the bounds, min and max. Great, so this function starts off with, we need to get the length of these scales. So we'll have float first scale length. So to get the length, we will take away the minimum from the maximum. So first scale max minus first scale minimum. There we go. Now we want the same for the second scale. So second. I can do that through Sublime. Okay, so remember our four steps from earlier. Step one is shift to origin. So we'll create a float offset value equals old value minus uh, scale min. So what it's going to do is take our old value. It will then take away the minimum value on our first scale and this will shift the value as if it's now on a scale that starts at the origin, as you can see below here. Next, steps two, normalize, float, so it's a normalized value, is offset value divided by first scale length. So this here will now normalize our value on the scale of zero to one. Step three is the upscale, which will upscale our chosen value up onto our second scale. So we can go float, upscaled value equals normalized value times second scale length. Okay, so now we have a value in the correct position on our second scale. Let's shift that second scale back to where it belongs. So we'll say shift from origin. And we'll say float new value equals upscaled value plus second scale min. So what that will do is it will shift our new value so it belongs on the scale that matches up with our second scale that we're shifting to. And then finally we return that new value. And there we have it. So let's use our initial values that we showed in the slides earlier and let's plug them into this function and see what happens. Now I know we already know the value is 16.4 but let's just make sure that this does return 16.4. Okay, so in the update function, let's test this out. Okay, so our new value that comes out of this function will be equal to this, and we'll say, okay, so we've chosen the value of three on our first scale, which went from minus five to five, and we want to convert it to a new scale, which was 10 to 18. And then let's debug.log this so we can print out new value. Save that, and let's give it a run. Now I've already attached it to this object here, so it should already run. Click play. Yes, 16.4. Okay, awesome. So perfect, there we have it. Now let's optimize that function a little bit quickly. So you're more than welcome to keep this function here and this here. You can clearly see where each value is going and what's being done to it. But I'm going to create a smaller function now that does the same thing, but just tidies up a little bit. Now, okay, so I'm going to call this one the same name, and I will move this somewhere out the way, so we'll call it original. So add an comment there, this is the original. And the arguments for this new one are going to be, so we'll have float old value, because we still need that. However, I'm going to use vector twos here, as I think they pair the start and end points of the scale together nicely. So we'll have our first scale, and then we'll have vector to our second scale. Now here, when you're accessing these vector twos, you can do either dot x to get the first value, or you can do first scale and then use integers in the index. Now I'm going to use indexes because I feel like the x and y is more like a grid position rather than 
a simple scale. So let's get rid of this. So let's add float normalize value. See, we're jumping straight in. Hold value, take away first scale zero divided by first scale one take away first scale zero so that's saying old value minus the minimum on the first scale divided by the maximum on the first scale take away the minimum on the first scale so this code is going is essentially exactly the same as this i've just shrunk it down a bit and then straight away our new value will be the normalized value times a second scale max take away the second scale minimum. So remember this is like the length up here and then add on the second scale minimum which will shift it back and then we can return the new value. And there we go. Now yes, it's all squashed together, so if you wish to keep the first example instead, that's totally valid. Also here, I'm first turning my result into the variable new value before returning it, instead of reference it directly like, like so, when you do that. This is because it's nice to have a variable that you can reference by name as the return value, and it helps when creating documentation. Okay, so let's just make sure that code works as well. So we'll add a section for our slimline version. So we'll say float current value. Now these, because we have vectors here, I'm not gonna initialize them inside the arguments. I'll, I'll make it a bit tidier here. So we'll say our initial value is three. Then vector two, our first scale a new vector 2 which goes from minus 5 to 5. Our second scale will go from 10 to 18. 18! 18. <laughs> and then we'll run the function to return that. So we'll call it new, new light value for now, which will be this. And then we'll give it the current value the first scale and the second scale and then we'll debug.log that cool so let's give that a test now go back to our unity and we have an error what have we got line 14 it's missing the equals my bad perfect now let's run this we should have 16.4 twice. Awesome. Okay. Results. Okay. So let's go back to our script one last time. Okay. Lastly, and the bit we all love, doc strings. Now I will do these very quickly, I promise you. So let's open them up and we'll say, given a chosen value on one scale, find its equivalent value on another scale. There we go. And they're the same, so I'll copy that here. And there we have it, the final code, which marks the end of our demo. I hope me going through things slowly has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to. And have a nice day.